Ever wondered how your message travels from your phone to a friend across the world? It's all thanks to the OSI model, the seven-layer system that powers the internet. Let's break it down in simple terms. So what is the OSI model? It is a theoretical stack of seven layers that that describes how network communications operate. This model was introduced to standardize networks in a way that allowed multi-vendor systems. Prior to this, you would only be able to have a one-vendor network because the devices from one vendor couldn't communicate with others. It is worth noting at this point that we don't actually use the OSI model anymore. We use something called the TCP IP model, and the concepts are exactly the same, but the layers are slightly different. So if we don't use the OSI model anymore, why would we bother learning it? Well, that's because it is still referenced a lot when troubleshooting or describing network operations. Let's take a look at the layers starting from the bottom up. Layer 1 is the physical layer. The physical layer is the lowest layer of the OSI model. Its key responsibility is to carry the data across physical hardware like Ethernet cables. Layer 2 is the data link layer. At this layer, the physical addresses are added to the data. This is the source and destination MAC addresses. Switches are also located at this layer. The network layer handles IP addressing and routing. At this stage of the OSI model, the source and destination IP address are added. Routers operate on this layer. Layer 4 is the transport layer. At this stage, the transport protocols are added such as TCP and UDP. TCP is used for error handling and sequencing to ensure that no data is lost. This layer also adds the source and destination port numbers. Layer 5 is the session layer which is responsible for establishing and terminating connections between devices. Layer 6 is the presentation layer and formats the data in a way that the receiving application can understand it. This layer is also able to encrypt and decrypt data if needed. Layer 7 is the application layer, and this is where the application and user communicate application specific protocols are used here, such as SMTP, if you are sending an email. A great way to remember these layers is simply, all people seem to need data processing. APSTNDP. So to fully understand how this model works, you need to see aerial world example. Let's say you send an email. The data travels through the OSI model, adding and processing data on each layer. Now this process is called encapsulation. Step one, the application layer. Outlook creates the data, the email you wrote, the email addresses, and gets ready to send it using SMTP which is the simple mail transfer protocol. Step two, presentation layer. The data is formatted in a way the receiving device will understand. In this example, probably ASCII, this layer could also encrypt the data if needed. Step three, session layer. A session with receiving mail server is started. Step 4. Transport layer. This is where it decides to use TCP or UDP. In this case, we'll use TCP to make sure every packet gets delivered. Also, the source and destination IP is added to the data. Step 5. Network layer. The IP address of the mail server is added as the destination and the source IP address is also added to the data. Step 6. Data layer. The MAC address of the router and the source MAC address of the host is added to the data. Step 7. Physical layer. The data is sent out on the network using Ethernet so that when the data reaches the other side, 
The receiving device will process the data in the same way, but in reverse, starting from the bottom up. So that is the OSI model. But how can we use this to troubleshoot? You may have heard the term, oh, that's a layer 2 problem or sounds like a layer 3 issue. When you hear that, that's people referring to this model. Let's say there's a problem with the network. If we go through this model, check in every layer, we can soon diagnose the problem. For instance, layer 1, are all the cables plugged in? Is the network card functioning? Could it be a fault with cable? Layer 2, maybe the switch has gone bad. Layer 3, is the router functioning? Do I have the right IP address? And the process goes on and on from there. And that is all you need to know about the OSI model. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.